rage trade just yet. Sit down and strap in for the Ultimate Super Coach Podcast. It's time to win your leagues and dominate your mates. This is the Jewel Position Podcast, hosted by Whisperer and Adriana Soros. Well, 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 with only three more sleeps until Teamless Tuesday, it feels like Christmas has come once again. There's been a plethora of changes since our last uh, position breakdown. I'm very, very worried about the news that's going to drop tonight, Ado, after I release this, because we've had Schuster out, Katoa in, Heinz out for two months, Heinz out for a week. No one knows. There's just a plethora of, of happenings. I finally locked in my team last night, mate, for pre-teamless Tuesday, and then we had this Heinz debacle, and now we're sitting here looking at whether we're going to hold Heinz or not, considering this calf injury. He is the first person that we're going to talk about today in our halfback and 5 8 podcast. We're going to combine the two of those because halfback, it's pretty, pretty slim. But <sighs> Nico Heinz, like, I just, I don't know. I don't know what to do, man. Yeah, it's a conundrum, isn't it? Um, You know, he he's worth 900K. So uh, you, you are... If it's one week is is the only scenario. If he misses, say, round one, you, you'll probably start with him. I think you've got no other choice because you're not going to go – So you're going to really regret if you went someone else, like a Sam Walker, and then you, yeah. you're not going to go trade him in round two. But if it's any more than that, um, I'm not going to be holding. It's 900K. Uh, but, again, um, we're going to have Teamless Tuesday come up. Uh, the, the, I've had varying reports. It's one, it's three, it was two. We I think it's not the two months. Um, but if he's named on Tuesday, you're going you're well, to go just, with it. I'm just pulling up the draw now. Fuck, they don't play until 7.35 on Saturday. Yeah. Um, in saying that, Tanner Boyd and the Titans play the last game of the round, but like people that are going Harry Grant, I mean, he plays Thursday. So we're probably not going to know until 7.30 on the Friday when they do the 24-hour team sort of confirmation. I mean, even if he is named at 7 on Tuesday, I'm not... Fully conf- confident. Well, I'm not confident, no. But um, I'm, I don't want to go into this season without Hines. I think with the little bits that we've seen of him in the preseason, it's he's like one of the absolute surety. I don't. Well, we don't like to say must have, but um, I, I don't want to go into the season without him if I can help it. Uh, but again, I'm not going to play silly, and, and I'm not going to have if it's it looking dicey. Um, there was a conundrum for us at the start of the season. Do we go with Harry Grant or Hines? And and I think we answered that we prefer Hines. A lot of us, um, you know. So maybe if it's looking dicey, you do just go the Harry. You know? I don't know. Like obviously, I'm I'm huge on Teague Wilton. Uh, put a post up on Ronaldo Voltalo. Obviously, keen on him as well. But I don't know if I can go both of them. If Hines is out, that's a big portion of my squad. But we'll talk on him today. We'll talk on him as he's fit for round one. Um, he mm. is, you know, the the top halfback. Do do you see him finishing as the top halfback again, or do you think he finishes at two? Uh, I reckon it's going to be neck and neck, probably him and um, Cleary. And I think on total points, he'll win. Um, because obviously Cleary's a lock for Origin and, and Hines is not a lock. Uh, and I actually probably am tipping when I'm having a look at their how they're going to line up. I don't reckon he will. Um, so you'll get more games in, um, but they are both supreme. I reckon that Cleary will probably finish top if, if I'm picking between the two of them. Yeah, well, Nico Hines, 30% ownership. Uh, last year averaged 86. Uh, this year pegged him at 84. So very, very slight regression. It is always hard to back up an 86 uh, point affair. But you know, if you can go 84, then then fantastic. I mean, buys in around 6, 13 and around 17. That's what I'm having issue with with my team. So obviously got a few Roosters, got a few Panthers, got a few Titans. And in my latest edition of my team, I've got three Sharks as well. So that means I'm going to have three Roosters out in round... The three Panthers out in round three, three Roosters out in round four, to three Titans, if you're including Campiero in round five, and then three Storm... Oh, three Sharks in round six. So my depth is going definitely going to be tested in the first... Yep, six weeks, but yeah, in draft, you, you've said he's a, a top two overall pick. Yeah, I, I, that's what I reckon. Um, you know, who who else are you going to pick? You know, he's got a ceiling. He, he, he's he got a pr- really good floor. Um, you know, comparing I'm, – I'm going to uh, the Podmasters um, draft tonight and the, the – 
Heinz news has got me in a quandary whether because I, I would have absolutely picked him first. Yeah, you've got one. Heinz. You've got the overall. You got the first pick in that, don't you? I got the first pick. Yeah, so I would have grabbed. I mean, I'm probably still going to grab Heinz, aren't I? I? I reckon because, I mean, although you could just grab Cleary because they're going to average the same, eh? And you, you, you've got someone right from round one. I could be none and none from three to start the season if I go with Heinz. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a quandary, but yeah, I think he's um I think he's one of the t- he's top of the pops, isn't he? Um, there's no there's no bad stuff about Heinz uh, to own every single person in Supercoach who's serious is going to want him. Uh, anybody in draft is going to have him right up the top of their hit list. And 30, it's 30% seems low, I want to say. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's the price tag, I guess. And I think that people are choosing, you know, they're going in there with one gun and they're choosing Cleary because he's actually 60K cheaper. He averaged 79 last year you know, and was injured, had a whole, had a, you know, a really interrupted season, if you look at it, um, and probably think he's got a bit of grow room. Um, so, I mean, that's not too bad for Hines. And now that this um, injury is there as well, I reckon that could see that ownership maybe drop a little bit as well. Just people who aren't game um, to do it, or even if he's out for round one, they want to just um, grab an alternative and do other things in their teams and not risk it. Um, so, yeah, that is Crazy low, I reckon, for him. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we'll definitely have to monitor that ownership over the next coming days. As I said, Teamless Tuesday, I don't think it's going to give me any clarity. Um, I'm probably just going to have to risk it. And, and look, if he's named, I'm probably just going to have to risk it and run with it uh, and then hope for the best. And Boy, I mean, it's handy because I think most people are probably going to VC Nathan Cleary against the Broncos. So that means you've got Hines on your bench. So it's much easier to take the river, uh, the reserve tag off him if he you know, is ruled out round one, but definitely something to monitor. But a, a man that is not going to be out for round one, touch wood, because God, who knows what's going to be happening. <laughs> I'm, gonna, that's, I'm having the year off if, if it happens. I'll tell you what. It's Nathan Cleary, 841K, 52% ownership. So nearly double Nico Hines' ownership and it's getting into... I'm not going to say antipod territory, but I have considered the idea of potentially not starting with him due to that round three buy, but it's just, it's very hard not to. 52% ownership, as we said. Last year averaged 79.9. This year, I have him pegged at an 81. So two point, you know, uptick there. You mentioned he had an interrupted year last year, very much so. Came back sort of slow for two weeks, but really hit his straps and, and looked fantastic. Uh, he's lost uh, Viliami Kikau on the left-hand side, but I'm not seeing that's going to affect him too much. Y- and you're going to have Brian Tottle move back onto the left, uh, by all reports. That's something that we also didn't mention, I don't think. Talon May, I don't think we've recorded since Talon May has been ruled out for the season as well. So more fun, fun news. Um, but yeah, Nathan Cleary, uh, top two. I mean, I don't have the number one overall pick in the Podmasters tonight, but I do have the number one overall pick in one of my home leagues. And I'm very tempted to not take either Cleary or Hines, but wow. yeah, I mean, Tommy Turbo wins your wins your titles, but um, yeah, if, look- if there's a captain, yeah, I mean, if if if, if we're playing captains, somebody like Tommy Turbo can go 200. Um, if it's a captain's league, I would, but if it's not, um, we- know, weasel with Cleary. weasel territory. But no, look, in all honesty, like if you if you messaged me and said, hey, I've got the second overall pick in my draft, and I'm going to take Cleary, I'm obviously not going to be like, oh no, don't do that because he's a stud and apart from origin, he'll be there all year. I think he's a guy that, you know, really likes chasing those individual honors too. So he'll want to play for Dally M's and everything like that. I also don't think the Panthers will be as dominant this year. So Ivan Cleary might not have the luxury of resting all these main guys, you know, in those 50, 50 calls. So I think Cleary's going to get big game time. Um, Pros a lot. Cons not, not a whole lot. (laughs) Not much more to say really with Nathan Cleary. I mean, 52% ownership speaks for itself. And when a guy is over 800K and owned by 50% of the league, then it makes you know a whole lot of sense. I've got no issues here. The only reason why I wouldn't start with him is because of the round three buy. And if I wanted to get really crazy in antipod, but I don't think I have the balls for that. Yeah, well, especially now with this cloud over Nico, um, it almost makes Cleary more of a must because we might do that risky strategy where we're waiting to see if Nico's going to play and we've got him on the bench. Um, so we're going to need a strong option in there. And he is... You know, he's our guy. You, um, you, you review a lot of teams. Have you... Look, I, know I get sent a lot of teams. I don't really review them, but I do get sent plenty. Have you seen a team without Cleary or Heinz? Because I feel like it's... Everyone's got one or the other. I really have not. I think that um, most of the people that are sort of sending through interested in, you know, critiquing their teams know enough not to go in without one of those um, guns. 
And you, you save a, a, a whole packet of money. If you've got a Boyd or someone in, in your second spot, you save your 600K. Uh, so that's the usual combo I'm seeing. But I am seeing some, I'm seeing some Hines, I'm seeing some Cleary. And I think that um, if people are going one in that area, um, it's these one of these two guys being the anchor. Tanner Boyd with Braden Trindle, and then and then you have Nathan Cleary, not, and then you have uh, Cam Murray, Dave Fafita, Hamel Olakuato, just all in your, your two. Yeah, yeah. Harry Grant and and Cook and yeah, yeah, just um, both those up top. Gary yeah. and Val. Yeah, you've got enough money Tarp, to do. Tarpany Tino up top. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> best team in the world if you leave those two out. Definitely. So. Um, uh, no, look, I reckon Nathan's on for a huge year because you we you take an appy out. We haven't loved what we saw in that World Club Challenge. They looked rudderless, didn't they? But you, he, he's such a um, creator. Um, I think that you'll see a lot more fall on. Yeah, he'll, he'll have to put them. He'll have to pop, pop, probably put the Panthers on his back a little bit more and um, you'd expect some more touches. And I do think the Panthers will gel over time, but it's a big loss. And I think that um, it will come through. Uh, speaking of hookers that you know have now entered the club, uh, Mitch Moses has got a new nine. He has, uh, hasn't hasn't got off to a roaring start either, Hodgson, as I predicted um, when we covered nines. Um, but Mitch Moses, Mitchie, he signed on with the old uh, Eels, the poor Tigers. They're like, oh, we didn't want him anyway. No, he bumped. As if you wouldn't Luke, have Luke, Luke, Brooks all, Luke Brooks all day. Hey, on that, on the on the contract re-signing, obviously uh, I made a slight jab at Jeremiah Nanai once he signed that big bag <laughs> and I got ripped apart. Um, yep. Do you think Mitch Moses is going to have a, a big regression with the, with the contract re-signing or you're not buying into that? I'm not buying into that because people will be debating whether their window is closed for the premiership, um, but they're still open enough to still challenge for the title, I reckon. Um, and so these guys, Dill, Dillbags and, and Moses and Gutho, they're going to be up for this year. And uh, I reckon they're going to try to get themselves into another GF if they can. So I don't reckon anything is bad. Bad's going to happen with Mitch. Four point four percent ownership. Uh, we're in, entering pod territory. I think from memory, I don't have their draw in front of me, but I don't think it's fantastic for the first four or five weeks. But I think I think from sort of round six to Origin, it really opens up. So, uh, Mitch Moses, you know the typical uh, flat track bully. I, I, he I, he could definitely be in my side, say round six onwards, if uh, you know this calf injury is persistent with Hines. Yeah, well, definitely. If you want to have a look at a juicy, you look at it. You look at it. It's it's light and shade. That opening first four. Five weeks, I think, is is awful, and then from six onwards, it looks like it's it's a kiss on the dick um, draw after that. So, look, um, I'm projecting Mitchy. He, he averaged seventy last year, so that's pretty much elite. Um, you know, you had to go Cleary and Hines really to go any better, haven't you? So he's he he's he's been much criticised at times, Mitchy, because he's had a low on him. But a seventy average last year really showed that he turned the corner into one of those elite um, halves. I think he's in the best form of his career. Um, I'm projecting a little bit um, of a backward this year to 68. Um, the buys are pretty good um, for, for Eels. He's in uh, round 14, round 18, round 27. Uh, what have I said about drafts? He's probably going to go. I've been in a few drafts now, a couple of live ones, and, and halfbacks are going so quickly. Are you taking would, Hughes or Moses in draft? Uh, I reckon I'd probably take Moses. I, I would take Moses just with an eye to that, you know, really juicy draw yeah. um and i just i'm a bit iffy on the melbourne storm i know that hughes does better when paps isn't in there but i'm a bit iffy on them whereas what i saw of the eels when all the players were on deck they, they looked slick you know so i think um i'd probably take mitch personally but mitch, uh, that, that's the next that's the next run in draft i was in a draft the other day and i think i ended up with luke brooks because all the good all the half decent half backs had got in the oh it was like a before the halfway point of round two. Yeah, I had to, I think I had the eight in one draft last week, I had the eighth pick in the first round. Uh, yeah. And I had to take Garrick and I didn't love that. And then I like basically had to reach for Hughes because there was like no halfbacks by the middle of the second. Yeah, on- well, by the time I'd got to it, because I wanted to get a ceiling player. You, everyone always goes a ceiling player. That's why you've got these Manus and all of them up there and Munster. Um, and I, there was nothing in there. I was like, well, wh- where was I looking at? I was, sh- I was at like Sean Johnson, Ilias t- sort of levels. And I was like, I'll just skip it and just see what's left at the end of dregs. But I think he'll probably go round two because people, it's a really hard position this year to find a quality one. Um, he's pros. He's got no early buy the rounds. Oh, here it is. The round six to 11 is the Tigers, the dogs, the Broncos, the Knights, the Titans and the Raiders. So what's that? Six, um, six weeks. He could, he could easily score 600 points in those six weeks. 
Yeah. Um, now, he, the cons for Mitchie, he does have really low ones in him. Um, he's got a low floor for a half, and that's what you're not going to get from Cleary and Hines. Um, and, he, and and they've lost some really key players. We can't be, you know, they looked really good in the trial, I will say. Uh, it looked like they hadn't really skipped much of a beat, had they? But um, they have lost some very key players. And you can't start the year with him because round one to five is the Storm, the Sharks, Manly, Panthers, and the Chooks. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's night and day. And I know that, that Hopgood is, is obviously a gun. I, I know that uh, Maduri looks really good. And the other back rower who is skipping my mind... Cardi. Uh, Car- um, Cardi, Murchie, all, all those. Look, they're, they're, they're good quality players. Um, but, you know, they're going to be missing their, their first teamers. They're, they're, they're 11, 12, 13, and 9, basically, from last year. So it is a big adjustment. I think a, a pro and a con with Mitch Moses is he can score points in, in quick clumps. But if that attacking prowess doesn't happen, like if Parramatta get held in defense for 20, 25 minutes and Moses, you know, doesn't have that big burst of clumps. And, yeah, he's got those really low scores in him. Um, but, yeah, round 6 to 11, man, I'm, I'm really, really tempted. Also won't play Origin. So, you know, he's out round 14 and round 18. Uh, whereas, like, clear he's going to be in and out. Hines could be 18th man. Like, so I think I think Moses over that middle period is, is fantastic. Uh, if you wanted to hold him all season long, that'd be, you know, fine as well because around 27 by uh, won't affect your head-to-head finals either. So... Yeah, I mean, I can see why it's he's four point four percent. You know, he's not. Um, I mean, I I wouldn't touch him if because I'm going Hines and Cleary. But if he's, you know, if, let's just say Hines is um out for three weeks, Mitch isn't the worst. Honest, uh, honestly, honestly, if, if his draw was swapped around, like that round six to eleven oh, and round one to five, oh, that could yeah. be closer to twenty percent genuinely. Yep. If it, if it, if it was flipped, if that script was flipped, and it's just it's for the start of the season, but I'm going to keep an eye on him. Yeah, uh, definitely. Keep an eye for that round six uh, to eleven run. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Jerome Hughes, seven hundred and twenty-one k, four percent ownership last year, averaged sixty-eight point five. I've got him pegged this year at a sixty-six. Uh, buys in round nine, thirteen, nineteen. Uh, draft due to the lack of halves depth. Uh, as I said, he could be a, a top of the second, middle second kind of guy. I've seen him go that early. And been going there. He's yeah, been going there. Few, few, few of my drafts. Yeah. Now with with Hughes, obviously Kiwi in in a very very prominent side, and he his average does soar without Pappenhausen in the side. And uh, Pappenhausen, uh, another story that we missed eight over between pot recordings. Uh, he's come out and said that the talk of him returning inside two months is you know, optimistic. And I genuinely think he could come back, say, round 20 off the bench and we might get Pappenhausen absolutely dirt cheap next year, which is lovely. Um, but as for Hughes, he definitely benefits with no Pappenhausen there. Uh, when it comes to floor, I mean, it's it's never fun to pay 720 k for a guy who's not the main half in his team. And that's the only thing that I've always struggled with, Jerome Hughes. And Munster's going to get more of the touches. Uh, how's Nick Meany going to bet into the side? You know, they've got a new edge pairing as well. Um, it's just, it's definitely one to, to consider. It's nothing huge, but um, I just think with the the options that we have above these guys uh, and even one man below that we'll talk on, I just, I'm not saying the value at 721K. Um, you know, I think we're paying top dollar for him and I don't see him as a keeper. And I've reiterated on this podcast a few times. If I'm not picking a keeper, I kind of want them to make money or at least hold value. And I think Hughes uh, could drop a little bit, unfortunately. But definitely over the origin period could be a handy pickup with, say, Moses, for example. Yeah, that's it. I mean, Jerome Hughes, he's, I mean, he's, he's a joy to watch. I really love watching him play because he's got um, that, you know, he's, he's got the X factor about him. You can just go and you're like, how come he slips through tackles and I just can't believe he got through it. Uh, but yeah, look, he's, uh, for me, I, I agree with you. If you're not going to spend up big in in the Hines and, and the Cleary, then the only reason you would not go those guys is to save some money. And I just don't think there's enough if no, you go Hughes. I, I agree. Um, I put a few big balls calls on Instagram this morning, and they're not like little spicy hot takes. They're, they're genuinely huge, huge uh, they're, hits they're, out of the park. It's a big friggin' beanbag sack <laughs> full of um, big balls calls. There. And, w- and <laughs> one of them was Sam Walker to out-average uh, Jerome Hughes. You've got him pegged at a 64. I had Hughes pegged at a 66. I'm probably a little bit higher on Sam Walker than you are, um, well. but that's only probably two or three points, so it's not huge. But really, really like the idea of Sam Walker and, uh, yeah, 623K. I think you're saving, what, 200K on Cleary? Yeah, you, you're saving better money. That's, a, that's 100K there, isn't it? There's a difference. Um, and and that's why it makes a little bit more sense to me. 
Um, people are probably going to be limiting how many um, chooks they do go with. That's but... the big issue because if you're going to have cheese, you're going to have Teddy. Uh, if you like the look of Egan Butcher, then can you really afford to have four chooks with a round four by? Yeah, well, I mean, I I don't reckon. <laughs> I don't reckon no. you can. Uh, that's I, why I'm, I... I'm iffy with three. I've got three roosters right now, and I don't I don't love that. So adding adding a fourth is just not viable for me. Yeah, it's not viable. And but look, people are taking a punt on him. You can see at eight eight point eight percent. People are like, well, I'm not going to spend this money on um, on Cleary or, or I, th- I imagine it's probably Hines. Uh, but I reckon Sam Walker, he's going to be mid-60s this year. Uh, I reckon he's improving. That's the other thing too. It's sort of hard to peg what he was going to jump um, this year because I really think he's getting better the more time he spends in first grade. I'd probably say that for Ilias as well this year after having put his full first full season in um, the NRL. So, um, yeah, I'm big, on, I'm big on Sam Walker like you, but... I'm not. I hate the roosters, and I'm not going to own um, Sam Walker. <laughs> I, I'm going to. I'm going to own the other ones like Teddy because you got no choice. If there's other ones, well, and I like Egan Butcher too, so I brought him in. But what, what um, do you what do you think of my Sam Walker over Hughes sort of shout in terms of averages? Obviously, you've got him pegged at a 64, but would you be shocked if if Walker averaged more? Or do you would be like, oh look, that that definitely is 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 feasible. No, I think it's fine. Um, you know, we a lot of us are tipping a big resurgence uh, if they stay injury free. I know they've got had a few injuries actually to start this year as well. I feel like we've old... been saying that for four years if they stay yeah, injury free. But um, look, I think that the we think that maybe the Melbourne Storm take a step backwards, a tiny step backwards, and we think it's a a, a big step forwards for the Roosters. So I don't think it's too um unbelievable. Sam Walker, he's got it, all the attributes to be a good super coach scorer. He's put on a bit of um, weight as well, so I don't think there'll be as many missed tackles, I think maybe a few tackle breaks. His goal kicking is probably a few percent better as well, which would you know result in a couple of more points as, as well. Uh, speaking of goal kicking halves, let's wind back the clock to 2012. We're going to look at Sean Johnson, uh, 456K, currently 1% ownership. Shout out to the one percent of people that yeah, own that own SJ. One percent of people just couldn't resist the rig. They oh, just that saw photo. Him with the shirt off, the photo, just having a little flex, and they were like, "Oh yeah, bro!" I've actually got him as a pretty big uptick this year. I mean, last year averaged forty three point four. Is it outrageous to say fifty five this year? That's like eleven points of value. I mean, it is. I think you've you've done your projections based on his rig as well. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. No, I just think I think uh, goal kicking. He should get that back this year. I mean, the Warriors just look a better side this year, and I don't know. Hopefully, SJ has a bit of a bounce back. But buys in round nine, thirteen, and nineteen. Um, yeah, I mean, I put here in draft due to lack of doubt. Okay, I've, I've I've copied and pasted. It. I was going to say Sean Johnson is not a round two guy. Oh, um, I, I've seen him oh, go. I'm reading this on the on the phone here. I'm like. The Whisperer is grabbing Sean Johnson in round, in round two? two. No, look, I've seen him go in round sort of six and round six, seven, eight. Uh, I think people are looking at averages from last year. I've said this a few times. When you get down to those dregs of players, you yeah start looking at averages rather than projections. And I think people would look at the average last year of 43 and, you know, I've got him pegged at 55. So I think he could be definitely a little bit undervalued. Um, but yeah, I just think SJ probably has... <laughs> Shit, dare I say, the most value of any of these halves that we're going to talk about today? Well, you see, the thing is, he's got he he's super coach royalty, isn't he? Uh, so pedigree. And, and, well, and and the thing with him is, I reckon he's probably the Warriors have lacked a bit of um, yeah, I don't know, stiff toughness in their forward pack, which you, I reckon they've added in great players. I think they've got. I think they've good. got like a top six forward pack. I reckon they've got a great forward pack this year. So that's what a half like Sean Johnson needs. If these guys are getting him up the field, I reckon he'll do do what he does. The, the thing about him is he's he's not a running half anymore. No, but is he going to run more thing. this year, do you think? Well, that's the thing. Like how much ball is like Chance going to get and how much ball is like Tomato Martin going to get out the back? So that's probably the only thing. Um, but look, even, even still like 43 last year, if he averages what two and a half goals a game, that's ten points. So I mean, I think there's value that even even ten points, and that's not including any uptick in sort of try assists and anything. So look, as much I as wouldn't I wouldn't be starting with him either, because if you've seen their draw to start, oh, it's, it's not fantastic. But it's, look, it's I don't, I don't, I don't hate draw. it. I think, um, you know, SJ, I do probably think he presents them. Oh, probably the next guy presents the most value um, that we talk about. But yeah, SJ j- j- genuinely probably has ten points of value, but I just think. Halfback is on a position I really want to be stuffing around with this year. If if Heinz is fit, big caveat there. If fit, mm, that's right. Ilias is our next bloke on the list. Um, three hundred sixty-three thousand three hundred, which is a real so that's like six hundred k. If you don't go um, Heinz, 
He's seven point one percent ownership, which is oh, surprises me. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't have thought he'd be so high. Yeah, I, th- I was surprised saying seven point one. Um, for anyone that's going to quickly ask in the chat between Johnson and Ilias, uh, asking where Tanner Boyd is, we have done Tanner Boyd, Tanner Boyd on the um hooker podcast so hooker. if you want to go back and listen to our thoughts on tenor boyd then go for it but yeah Ilias at 7.1 percent seems fucking high it's high i mean they got a hard draw to start the year i think that is totally a money thing isn't it um average last year was 35 um famously was that game where he got hooked but i'm going to tell you something is it shows the medal of the guy because he came back in uh he, they he, i think he had a really fine um finals campaign I reckon he's going to be better this year. Though I'm not tipping second year syndrome for him. I think he's going to do better this year. Based I, on I just, I, I just think people expect these like 18, 19 year old halfbacks to come in and just be fucking good from the start. It's like, yeah, just chill. Like give him like two or three years. And I think second year. You've got year, Cody Walker there as if they're going to give him a giant hand in what they're oh, going to Le- do. Cody and Latrell are t- taking all the touches. So yeah. like, yeah, I think Ilias bounces back. I mean, you've got him pegged for a 16 point uptick this year up to a 51. I do. I do. Um, I'm having a look at his PPM. I've sort of conservatively guessed because uh, he did have some low, some shorter games in there, a couple in last year. So I've I've tipped a, a progression upwards for him um, this year, and it is a big one. As we're both tipping the same sort of jump for uh, both of them, aren't we? Yeah. Um, Sean Johnson and Ilya. So I'm projecting a 51 from him this year, and that, and that obviously does mean that there's some value. I mean, just for the record, I think on board we were predicting mid 50s. So, you know, it's not the worst shout in the world. I just, their draw is, um you know, pretty hard to start. And while that might not affect someone like Latrell, I think that could affect um Ilias. Yeah, I mean, um, I think Latrell and Cody, they're going to get enough touches to negate the draw, whereas Ilias is the third string. Um, and for, for halfbacks, it's very rare to be the third string in the modern day. So that's probably the, the, the knock against him. I mean, with attacking chances against good sides, they're going to be limited. Um, and yep. Latrell and Cody will take a lot of those. So how many chances will Ilias get? But in saying that... Um, on the right hand side there, you, you're going to have uh, Campbell Graham and probably Isaac Thompson. So it's not a weak edge at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's going to be, and I, I think that it, he'll be all the better for he's been in his second year of his career playing a finals campaign. I think he's going to be okay. I just, if the draw was easier and you were going to go him as your second, you know, we go on a Boyd, you know, but I, I've got I'm not going to begrudge anyone going uh, an Ilias. Let's talk about the buys. It's round 16, round 20, round 26. That doesn't bother me at all because he's long gone by then, isn't he? Um, yeah, he's made his money, done his job, and you've sold him by then. Yep. So you get you get the early part of the season. Um, he's improved greatly as a footballer on last year, and I expect his second full season for him to improve. Um. He's not a goal kicking uh, half, and you know that's Sean Johnson all slot goals, and he's a pretty good goal kicker. It's and and that's the thing about Hughes as well. That sometimes that extra ten or twelve or fourteen points is pretty handy to you, isn't it? So it's um, one of those things. He's average. I mean, if he was a good goal kicker, you could just put ten points onto that, and that thirty five doesn't look really as wretched as it did last year. So. Um, you know, he, he's got a hard draw. Um, he hasn't really translated last year um, into super coach, unfortunately. Some of his scores last year, let me read them minus out. Minus one and a zero? He got in he got a minus one and a zero um last oh, year. Right. And, and he got a 17, 17 and an 18. 18. So if he's still if he hasn't got those out of his game, um, if you happen to be playing him or have the reserve on him, you're gonna be shitty. Yeah, big AE nightmare there um, if you do pick him and not decide to play him. A uh, mm-hmm. couple of avoid like the plagues based off this uh, this show. A few of these might end up in our teams. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, yeah, maybe. Jackson Hastings at 5.1%. Uh, I just think he is great for NRL fantasy with the kick beaters and stuff. But for Supercoach, I mean, I think he's just going to yeah be the shovel. I don't see yeah, much. We should have learned what um, his, his output is going to be pretty much what we saw at the Tigers, isn't it? It's not going to be any better. No, um, probably worse. 5.1 shocks me, really. Yeah, very high. Probably the jewel. Uh, 4.3% with Chad Townsend. Is this Holy pe- Moses. Is this, is this people just trying to target the draw? Like, Yeah, I mean, you want to get a slice of the Cowboys, but Chad is not the one you go. Uh, uh, 2.1% of Bulldogs fans own Josh Reynolds. <laughs> Holy moly. I'm just looking at this and going, what, why? I mean, two point, what we look at Sean Johnson is 1%. Yeah. More people own Josh Reynolds. And more people own Adam Reynolds as well at 3%. Yeah. Adam Reynolds. Uh, he's, he's injured. He, uh, like, it seems like every friggin' week nearly. 
Still good for the Broncos, though. I, I think it was a good buy. Yeah, he, he's he's, a, he's an absolute um, ornament to the game, really, in a way. Lovely, um, a Ray. Um, but oh, look, you can't. How are you going to go start the season with him? Yeah, no, it's. I don't know. You can start the season with any of these blokes. I mean, like, as much as I take the piss out of the one percent of people that own Sean Johnson, him at one percent compared to I don't know, Chad Townsend at four point three is just criminal. Yeah, I mean Chad was the buy of the year last year, really, uh, and I I was poo pooing it more than anyone else. I was like, why the hell would you pay eight hundred for for Chad? Yeah, he's really um, good. Really good. Um, let's move on. He's got some he's got some swag, and and he's he's helped the, the cows, but I wouldn't own him for a million bucks. No, let's move to five eighths because at the start we have big boy Cam Munster. Now with Heinz out, Honey. with Heinz out, people are looking at going Grant. I mean you've mentioned to me that you might consider going Munster 848k 14% ownership which seems yeah. high um yeah. last year he averaged 80.6 I've got him pegged at about a 78 I don't think it's gonna go drastically too far slight regression buys in round 9 13 and round 19 uh in drafts you know he's going from anywhere sort of from pick 7 to pick 11 so mid to late first pros it's Cam Munster cons it's Cam Munster uh, he's back back on the beers apparently. Which, oh, how do we oh. feel about that? Oh, I don't know. He, I've seen him in training, and he looks he's he's looking okay. So maybe he he's um got back into the no beers. Well, da- I don't he, know if that should rule you. I think he's a dad now, so he's probably got to be somewhat more responsible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, he, it's kind of a fourteen percent owned. Um, I, I was like, oh, maybe I'll take a slice of. Cam oh yeah, Smith. I'm not. Yeah, I'm monster not- because he's. Um, nine percent or something. I'm but not saying is- yeah, the fourteen percent's too high. I, I was just conf- I was just not no, no sorry. I'm not saying the fourteen percent's a bad pick. I was just surprised that he was so so high considering someone like um uh, yeah, yeah, Dewey, Dewey people have got Dylan value Bro- in, in these other ones. Yeah, so it's it's. I just thought this is sometimes in Supercoach it shows you where there's some value picks. And and Munster, how can you afford a Heinz, a Cleary, a Grant? You know, get your Teddies and all of those, um, and buy yourself a Munster too. I just, I just think for fourteen percent, with the amount of teams I've seen, I don't think I've seen a Munster team at all. So I was just taken aback by the fourteen percent. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I well, bet the old uh, Super Coach Sponge on um, Twitter there, he said through a Munster team, um, but I, I haven't seen a heap of them. Uh, I think that. I mean, I, I haven't even considered him until the Heinz news, and I was like, well, maybe I can grab a Munster just to ha- so that my team doesn't look the same as everyone else. Do you think he gets not going to wh- fail? Yeah, he'll he'll still average high seventies, maybe. That's what I was saying. Like with with no Pap, do you think he just takes a bunch more touches? Yeah, I think so. I think the I think, like, so. I think the man. I looked at Munster early in the preseason when there was talk that he was going to go back to fullback. <laughs> I was very oh, very yeah. intrigued then. Um, but him at six, I'm probably not as keen as fourteen percent. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, you can't go wrong with Cam Munster. I don't think he's going to fail you yeah. at all. Yeah, nobody who... You're not going to be able to laugh at a, a Cam Munster owner oh, and no. say, ha, 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 you got it wrong. Money Munster's going to just keep cleaning up points. Uh, and look, you've got a no-frills sort of meanie that's come in there to replace Paps. That's one person who sort of takes a bit of um, control. I think it's going to be, you know, Hughes, Grant, and, and Munster. So, you know, he's going to get his hands on the ball and people are probably like, you take one of those big cogs out of a, a team like Melbourne, it's going to fall to the other three. So people are probably optimistic for months to have run on the show a bit more, I guess. Now, when you make content, you put out a lot of really, really crap predictions. But last year, my breakout or bounce back player was Dylan Brown. Started with him. And I think that was one of the reasons I had such huge success. And boy, 20 <laughs> point increase, 74 average last year. Tell me about Dill Bags, because this was one I was very, very happy with. I just thought last year, I mean... <sighs> People ask how you find these value picks, and and the reason how I came for Dylan Brown was, I think he had one try assist and still averaged fifty points a game. So the floor was definitely there. We just needed to see a little bit more of attacking output, and we saw it last year. And geez, now he comes in at just under eight hundred k. Yeah, seven hundred eighty-one thousand three hundred in my very very first team when the team picker came out. My one treat to myself in my team was I remember Dilbang. this. I do remember this. Yeah, I mean, look, and in that um. Uh, in the trial when they were all on deck, he was sizzling hot, wasn't he? He looked good. He got through for that try. I showed the missus on the old Instagram last night, a couple of pictures to choose. I, I made a pick between Horsburgh and Tuppany and she's like, what the fuck oh, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, she, 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 she's going to have dill bags in her team. I guarantee you that much. So he's an absolute star. I don't, I think that he's actually finally realizes he's not a pretender. Not that he ever was, of course, but he's found his confidence, hasn't he? He, yeah, he looks remember, almost like he he's an even piece now in 
what they do. He burst, uh, to, he to burst onto the scene, what, 2019? And yeah. then, uh, you know, people were talking 2020 about him getting a million dollar contract. And I was like, well, let's just, let's just pump the brakes here a little bit. Um, 2021, you know, not great. And then really, really found his feet last year. Uh, you've got him pegged at a 72 this year after a 74 last year. Um, yep. He's just, cons- like, he just racks up points. Like, he, he definitely gets in and amongst the work. He'll be a guy that has no attacking output. You'll be watching the game thinking, fuck Dylan Brown, do something. And then you check at halftime, he's on like 43 points. You're like, shit, yeah. Him and Munster, from? they're the same kind of mold. They're just great runners, aren't yeah. they? They they run and they, they rack up points in tackle breaks, line breaks. They're always there to pop up for a try. I think that the in the five eight position there, I pro- almost prefer these guys. Well, I definitely prefer these guys to the passing ones at the moment because it's all going to the sweeping fullback. Um, but Dillbags, he'll get his points from tries and from tackle breaks and these great runs. I reckon he's going to be in the seventies again this year. Oh, um, I'm, I've just seen your projection for the next person, and you don't have Dylan Brown as the second best five eight. No, I don't. Oh, spicy. Well, let's talk about the pros I've, and cons. I've got, well, I mean, so Dillbags, it's the same as Moses. They've got the hard draw to start, but I'll have my eye on him for round six, won't we? Because yep. they, that uh, round six to 11 with Dillbags could be a really nice Hang on. So, so round six, we'll get a price rise in three, four, five. So we'll get three price falls. If, yep. if he could, if he could be if he 600. could be like six fifty, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be tempted. Oh, yeah. yep. um, the cons expensive uh, early games. Obviously, we've we've said this about the same thing about Moses, but uh, the difference between Moses and Dillbags is Dylan's probably got the the consistency in the in the bottom flooring that um, that yeah Moses doesn't have. But let's talk on Dewey because Jesus, you've got him pegged at a seventy three average, which is one point higher than Mister Dylan Brown six hundred and six hundred twenty four k. 22.29% ownership feels awfully, awfully, awfully low um, compared to someone like a Matt Burton, who I think was at 45% last week. Uh, last year, average 59. This year, we've got him pegged at a 73. Buys in round 7, 13, 17. Uh, you've got here for draft third best 5.8. I'm assuming we need to correct that to be the second best 5.8. Well, um, yeah, I mean... Uh, you're splitting uh, hairs, I've aren't got you? A, I put it, yeah, I am splitting hairs because I've got him only one point apart, haven't I? I reckon he's... Um, He's one of those accumulators as well. Like he's different to um, a dill bags, like a running. He, he, you know, he'll drill passes and get a try assist like that. And he's obviously a goal kicker as well, which will get him to that average. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone's going. Well, are people going to really in draft grab him before they grab dill bags? I don't think so. No, and I, I don't hate it. I mean, second year back from ACL, we know how big that is for for players. Yep. So I've got him have doing good things this year. Uh, the cons, none really you've put here. Uh, how did the Tigers go this year? Can't be worse than last year. Man, if we go worse than last year, I'm, I'm giving up. Honestly. I mean, they're going to score something like 25, 30, 40 more tries yeah. this year. So he's going to have more tries. Since he's going to have more goals. He's got better weapons there. you got Bateman and iPad on your bloody edges. Yeah, and, and, and we how, saw... How, what could you say? The only thing is, is, is if you think he's going to get injured or put back to the centres. That's the only cons, really, but that's not going to happen. We, we saw just how good he was against, against the Raiders. I mean, in that trial, he just he just carved his up. He was just so good with the ball, and he looked really good. He ticked all the boxes. Yep, definitely. I... I uh, look, I put Price as one of the the pros. Um, that's the only thing that would ever make me not go with an out and out gun like Munster. Is it's a decent uh, um, enough saving down to Dewey, uh, and I think he's going to average in the seventies um, this year. I've tipped him to seventies. It. I, feel- I'm, I'm. I reckon he's one of the the most popular ones you can go. I reckon in the five eight. I feel like we haven't mentioned that uh, that trial on the weekend, mate. No, I mean, come on, Raiders. <laughs> it's bloody Fuck, you look, you no, look so uh, bad. You look so Rips- shit. Sticky does not uh, care about bloody trials. He's like, he tells the lads, just go out there and give it 40%. Well, as, as we know, the Tigers are one of the greatest trial teams of all time. I mean, I, re- <laughs> I remember the standing ovation game against Manly two years ago and we won 56 to four, I want to say. And so tr- 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 I'm not panicking. I'm not panicking, but I, look, I haven't, I just, you know, Fogarty is going to need to get Jack White and up and about to do something. He can't have a, He can't be one of those fleety in and out of games players if the Raiders are going to do any good this Seb, year. But we're Seb, on uh, Dewey, aren't we? But he he did carve us up. Seb Chris, Dewey. Seb Chris at fullback did not look amazing. Well, he's gonna, he's going to be there in round one. Fuck, really? Because um, Jeez. you know, Rapana has said um, I haven't got the legs now for fullback. He told Ricky I won't do it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, someone that does have the legs for fullback. What a transition. AJ Brimson seven seven hundred. Well, six hundred and seventy three k, three percent ownership. 
honestly. Mm. I could get around this. Uh, last yeah. year, got a 64. This year, I've got him pegged at a 65. Buys in around 5, 13, 16 in draft. Got him pegged at a, as a mid-third round pick. Uh, AJ Brimson, I, I feel like he's finally like hitting his traps consistently. I mean, he's very been always been up and down. Um, mm. I think it just shows you the faith that Holbrook has in him because Jaden Campbell's meant to be this, you know, a beacon of all light, the promising young fullback that's supposed to take the Gold Coast by storm, but yet Brimson has won the job two years in a row now. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I really like Brimson. I mean, fullback that's going to be available at 5 8 uh, If you did want to zig against Dewey, I think for the same price, uh, Dewey is 624 Brimson's a tad more expensive. But if you wanted to go pod, I, I don't hate the Brimson shout at all. Yeah, same. I like him as a footballer, uh, Brimson. Uh, and they can really turn on some attack, those Titans. So I reckon he's going yeah, to be there's trying. Yeah, there's this narrative around the, the Gold Coast. That, like, people always worry, like, taking their attacking players, are they going to put up the points? The Titans can score the points with the best of them. I mean, they can also yeah. they can also leak them with, with the worst, and that's, that's the right. problem. They, they can score 50, but they'll, they'll the other team will score 50 a, a classic ti- a, a classic Titans game just ends as it with the Titans lost 32-28. Like, they, they can <laughs> score points. Like, don't put don't get that wrong. And Brimson, uh, in the trial, looked really good, was supporting really well from the middle. I think he will really benefit with Tanner Boyd taking it to the line a bit more. Yeah, I think so. And uh, look, it's just a fullback you can pick in your 5-8. And uh, when um, Schuster went down, I was I was thinking, all right, well, do I go to a Burton or I'll I will be different and I'll go a, I'll go a Brimson because I'm not I'm not as convinced on Burton, but um I reckon he's going to be in for a good year. I think he could mid 60. I mean, look, a fullback, you know, you've you got to look at him as a 5-8 because you're going to put him in 5-8 yeah. if you've going to if you're going to pick him in uh, fullback, you're going to get no value out of him. Well, that's um, the thing. If you're looking at his projected average of 65 and you're stacking him up against the best fullbacks in the game, it's it's not close. Um, but the best half, the best five eights in the game, I think he definitely stacks up there or thereabouts. Do you think like um, have we got Ponga on here? We do, we do. Well, well, we'll talk about whether. I mean, you can get Ponga for a couple of hundred k cheaper if you think he's going to do anywhere in the ballpark. Ah. Yes, yes. Um, Thomas Dearden, I remember back in round two or three. I think Dearden had a couple of good scores, and someone messaged me. They were like, "Oh, should I buy Dearden?" And I'm just like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> go away." Yeah. And then average fifty eight in the end. Really good. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, it was his career year, wasn't it? Um, really, it's, uh, fifty eight. He, he sort of, uh, finally a coach had showed some faith in him, and 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 he's even next to an experienced half, and he and he flourished, I reckon, last year. Six hundred and twelve thousand three hundred for him. He's two point eight percent owned. You can see these little couple of percent of people that just taken a punt on a cowboy. Yeah. Um, because of their nice um draw. Uh, look, he, I'm pro- projecting him for a 60 average this year. And I don't know, if, is that value at 612? We think AJ Brimson's going to get a 65 for 673. So you've got to kind of work out a value for dollar. Um, would I be happy to... Sp- I reckon Ponga for 400 is probably going to average 60. So that's yeah, why I'm I think, I think with, Dearden, you know? I think with Dearden is like, if you're buying him, you've got to trade him out sort of round six, round seven. I'm not too sure if I'm confident to hold him through through tough draws. Um, if I was taking a punt, yeah, the good draw, but you're basically locking yourself into a trade here, which I'm never a huge fan of at 600K. Nah, not for me. Um, the buyers in round 15, round 19, round 24. So, you know, having a few Cowboys in your team is good um, business, probably with their draw and the fact that they don't have early buys. You just got to find the right ones. Uh, in draft, you know, it's it's a, it's a halfback crisis, you know, so I don't know when he's going to go, but he's sort of like a, you know, six or seventh in the five, eight position. So if I lost Munster, Dillbags, you know, Dewey, <laughs> even probably Burton, I, I get to a point where I just go, I throw that position in the bin if there's nothing else good in there. And I don't know if I'd be making a selection in the five, eight position with did. And when there, I reckon there'd be heaps better pos- pos- players on the, on the board. Yeah. So I'm not rushing to get him. If, if, if we're down to that point in the five, eight position, I might as well just take a Schuster who's going to probably do the same, you know? Um, look, his pros are that he's found his f- feet in first grade. Um, the cows draws or draw of the Raiders, the Broncos, the Warriors, the Titans, the dogs, the dolphins and the Warriors again. Oh, and then the Knights that's beyond a good draw. That is an amazing draw. So, so for all of you people that are draw people, like I'll get that. We were, we, took, we were harping on about that with the eels. So how could you not want a piece of that draw? It, whatever his best is, I reckon, Dearden, whatever the best he's going to do is going to be in this um, opening draw. Um, Cons, he, he doesn't really have a huge ceiling if you look at him. He's the same price as an Adam Dewey, pretty much. Yeah. What are we thinking. even talking for? I'm not seeing much upside. Um, Cody Walker, 602K. 
Six percent ownership. Uh, last year, averaged fifty-seven point three, which was a bit of a drop off. Um, I went and had a look at his historic scores without Adam Reynolds, and they weren't fantastic. And his season last year backed that up. Um, this year, I got him pegged at a sixty-two, which is a five-point uptick. Uh, buys in around sixteen, twenty, and twenty-six uh, draft. I got him sort of late fourth, early fifth. Now with Cody Walker, you know the pros are. It's Cody Walker. He has a 200-point game next to his name for Supercoach, and that was before PVL ball. Uh, he had the record before Turbo and, and Cleary blew it open, so he definitely has that. Um, he is a speed player, but he's getting on, but he does have Latrell outside him, which is always handy. Uh, I think another pro for him is uh, another season with Ilias building that combination, and, and a fit Trell also definitely helps as well. So much, much of uh, you know positive for him that they attacked in the left side, which is Cody's side. Uh, definitely points are going to be there. The cons are a uh, really, really tough draw to start the season. does have a super low floor in him. Um, we've seen with Supercoach over the last couple of years that the 5 the 8 or the halfbacks don't really get those try assists. It's more the sweeping fullback out the back. So is that taking points away from Cody? It, it seems like it. I, I do think there's five points of value, but I'm not really keen uh, with the pretty tough draw to start the season. Yeah, I'm the same. I, I've always loved at owning Cody Walker and I, on the old same game multis whenever Souths are up on a on a decent matchup, you slide him in, don't you? And AJ for three. Um, that's just the way it is. He he's a try scorer and he always pops up. He's a will of the wisp kind of player. But like you said, uh, it's the sweeping fullbacks that get it. I was going rank last year over, you know, he he'd do these beautiful wraparounds and then cut out a bloke and get absolutely drilled by the defense, and then they give it to just the catch and pass setter. But that's the way Super Coach is now. We we've become a bit of a last touch game. So um 600 k for Cody. Um, I just reckon we've, we are seeing a steady decline since the exit of uh, Reynolds. You have got the hard draw. The next bloke on the list is probably one. If you're going to take a punt, I reckon this is probably a better punt. And speaking of punts, biggest boot in the game, Matt Burton, 594k, 33% ownership. That's come down Popular. That's come down a lot. I think it was at 43, 44 uh, about a week ago. Uh, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm not sure if that was the impressive performance of doing the trial or people just getting FOMO, but... Uh, you talk about Dylan Brown being in your very first iteration. Matt Burton was sort of in mind. He really hasn't been back since. Um, you've got him pegged at a 68. Mm. Uh, I don't know. If, You're that's high? Yeah. You're going to down high. 65, maybe. Yeah, maybe 65. Maybe. But tell me about Burton. Well, look, Burton, he had, he had a 57 average last year. Um, the re- main reason I'm putting in there is even just try assist to kick out. You know, like he's got to get some more stuff this year. He's got some more um, decent people that have come in. He's got a, well, I mean, actually I've, I've been a bit um, anti Marnie as well, but his service off the ground made it, I think we looked, I've always said, I thought JMK was probably better than Marnie was showing in his uh, end of his career uh, at the Eels. But I think when I, what I saw of him in the dogs, he really complimented him. So I think that the couple of additions are going to help Burton so that he's not, relied on so for so much in the team um last year they were in so much trouble at times that all he was was that big boot remember that like he just would take no runs or anything he just keep, keep booting that ball and it's like all he was was a kicker um i reckon he's gonna I've, I've just done a little bit of sums on what i think his ppm could do um and who he's got in the team with him i think he's going to be yeah mid 60s at us oh he's value yeah. i'm not i'm not saying he's not yeah. value i just think pushing 70 is Oh boy, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm anti-potting him, so I really hope not. I really hoping it stays around. Yeah, I reckon he, he might. I don't know whether he starts slow and finishes strong. I don't know what order it's going to come in, but I think they're going to find their. their oh, there'll group. be waves. It, it's it's yeah. it's not it's not going to be a consistent 68. It'll be a 30 and a 140. Like it's going to be very up and down. Um, I, I mean, the pros you've you've said it. The price is really nice, and they've had some good purchases to the club. Uh, the cons, you know, he's had some very low scores in him: a 20, 23, 27, 28. So if the Bulldogs do go missing, which, you know, the Sharks really shut them out in that trial. Um, so there definitely is still going to be some room for growth. And I think it yeah, does. I think I did this before I saw that game. And I realized um, how much they still have to work on for gelling, I guess. I think in a perfect, if they're maybe in a, maybe next year, his average is 68. Maybe, you know? maybe. I just, yeah. I think it comes down to Hayes Perham, to be honest. I think um, how much Hayes Perham clicks in this, in this attack will definitely help. Uh, Burton, but it's definitely one to see, and I'm very happy to sit on the sidelines and hopefully watch him crash and burn. Uh, Kalen Ponga, 530k, uh, 530k, yes. Uh, ownership, I've got 33% here, but I think that's Burton. So while I'm waffling away, Ada, if you want to pull up 
Ponga's uh, ownership yeah. for me. Um, does have the handy dual upgrade. That's been something that's happened between uh, the last time you and I have spoken. Has finally gotten the, the 5 8 update. Uh, and last year averaged 50.4. This year, I've got him pegged at a 62. Buys in rounds 10, 14, and round 19. In draft, you know, you could probably have him as late as sort of round six, but now with the new jewel, he could be pushing late third, early early fourth. Ado, what's your ownership? 10.4. So that's pretty low, pretty low for, low for what for I Ponga. thought. Well, I mean, um, I think that that's probably jumping every day since yeah. we heard the Schuster news. It's probably just tempered now that we've heard the Katoa news. Well, that's, so. that's the thing. I mean, with this news that, that Schuster's out, a, a lot of people did jump on the Ponga train. I was one of them. I think I, I made an iteration of my team with Ponga in there. And uh, the big pros are that beautiful early draw. I mean, they have a fantastic draw. Uh, it's it's Kalen Ponga. He's had averages of 70 in years gone by. Um, you know, he's, he does have the huge ceiling and... and you know, could could be the making of a good five eight if he has the time. The cons are it looks like he's not going to be goal kicking, which is going to be a, a big hit for his sort of average. If if Jackson Hastings is the one kicking, how much touches are Lockie Miller at the back going to be taking from Ponga as well? And also, we 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 can't really not talk about the defensive liabilities. I think he'll be racking up uh, plenty of missed tackles, minus sure. five, minus six points a game in missed tackles. Yeah, and there's also that risk, um, you know, he's going in the front line so that he doesn't get as many head knocks. Yeah, I mean... I mean There's got to be a chance of copping a whack in the head in that front line. The Magic Sponge mentioned it on, on his podcast, the, the NRL Physio, about this, the amount of concussions, and I feel like we're not talking about that with KP. And um, yeah, definitely more susceptible. But 530K, now available at 5.8. Um, yeah, I think... I don't hate so it. Would I think you go, would you, so we're going Dewey instead of Munster because it's a good saving. Would you go down and have Ponga as your, as your main one with a Katoa on the bench? Would you get no, that? I, I don't think I can trust Ponga as my five, eight, one, um, but I could definitely trust him as my five, eight, two. Uh, and basically I'm only trusting him for the first five weeks because of that sort of golden draw. And then oh, hope, yeah, nice hope, draw. hopefully sell to sell to, to Schuster when he's back. Yep. Ezra, ma'am. Ma'am. 580. I was shocked when I heard his price. I was like, oh, he must have gone all right last year. Yeah. You know, um, good old man. Uh, 583,600. He's only 1.6% owned. That feels he high. Average, yeah, it, it is It is high. I mean, for 583, you know, we're, we're projecting him lower than Ponga. So just go Ponga and, and save some money. Yeah. Um, it's got to be Broncos fans, hasn't it? He's average with 55. I've got him for a 59. Um, this year, the buyers are not going to be too much of a worry. Round sixteen, round nineteen, round twenty-five. You, pro- well, I mean, he's at a price where five hundred eighty-three. You're going to try to get it. Hopefully, he makes money and you get him to Munster. No, I don't I know. Just, I just I don't, don't see. Just I just don't it. see it. Eh? Like I don't know. Like maybe uh, I, I, I see this going one of two ways. I don't think there's going to be a middle here. I think he's either going to kill it with Reese Walsh or Reese Walsh is going to take all these touches. Yeah. Um, look, he's got that's the pro. He's no no um, early buys. Uh, he actually, I looked at him. And he had a thirteen uh, points against the Melbourne Storm, and his next lowest game was thirty six. I reckon that's a pretty good floor. That's not bad, you know, for a, for, yeah, for, for a non goal kicking attack reliant half uh, five eight. Yeah, second year first grade. So I think I say the same thing about him and Ilias. I don't think he's going to get worse this year. I think he's going to get better. Um, and you know that floor is probably one of the better ones uh, in that in that position. Um, the cons we haven't seen a ceiling on him um, so far, and you know we know that Dewey has that, we know that Burton has that, we know that Dillbags has that, we know that Ponga has that. I just don't think he's got a ceiling in him that um, is anything that you want to spend that kind of money on, unfortunately. Um, and you know, are you going to take him ahead of Burton? Like, yeah, I that's mean. The issue. Even even you I know, don't I don't love Burton this year, but that's right. I love, him more, I love both him of those guys him. are yeah, both of those guys are a punt for whatever reason. Um, but I re, I would rather I, I could see myself taking a Burton punt. I just couldn't do it with Ezra Man. Yeah, hundred percent. Now, a uh, gift from the gods himself, Wayne Bennett, the classic super coach killer who doesn't play rookies, who loves the old guard, has said, "Fuck it, Milf, <laughs> you ain't playing, champ." And has dropped Milford in favour of Isaiah Katoa at 216k. Why is he not 200k? I don't know. He's never played. Yeah, I know. That's why. Why is he not 200k? But 216k, 25.8% ownership. Expect this to be hot, hot take 45% by Tuesday. 
Yeah, mate. Let's just hope it happens, eh? Let's just hope it happens because I oh, had you imagine if Wayne? For, can you imagine? I had my I had Ponger in my team for fifteen minutes. Can you imagine if Wayne's leaked this to the press and then on Tuesday just named Milford oh, anyway? It's so Wayne. It is. <laughs> it is so Wayne. And like we're gonna have to go and break it because we've just gone. Schuster's out. What do we do? Oh, Katoa's in. So what, I put yeah, him straight well, in again. I've even made a couple of dollars here. This is fantastic. We're gonna have to break our teams on Tuesday because. I mean, it's like uh, it, it is. It's not as bad as um, watching Wayne drop Boyd. You know, like we, we that would have been unbelievable. We will, all would have just died of shock. Yeah, you know, it, feel, it feels like it, it, feel, really it feels like it feels like the same. Milford. But yeah, yeah, average last year, uh, none. Uh, this year, you, you've got him pegged at a fifty-six, which fuck that feels high. But I mean, he's definitely promising. I think the big cons with him is the fact that. The Dolphins, I just don't see them putting up points, to be honest. Yeah, the Dolphins are shit. He, he could actually just be right on the button 50. And look, when he came in on, on the trial, I think that's why he's in there oh, and, and uh, Milford isn't. He came on, looked great, and got a got all the attacking points in that try. It was pretty much all in one play. So all he's got to do is a couple of those a game. He doesn't look like a shrinking violet to me. So I think he's going to get out there and and um, give it a go. And he b- looks like a real talent. I, barring- I reckon... Barring, First year, he looks more talented than Ilias to me. He scored thirty five. Yeah, so. barring um, barring job security issues, we're gonna have an unlim- we're gonna have an unfazed run to basically get him at his peak because his first buy is in round sixteen. So we basically we're, we're gonna get as much time as we need to with Katoa to to eventually cut him when he's made some cash and you know boy hopefully you know upgrade him to to someone decent. Uh, the pros no early buys as we've said does have the jewel. You know, price and timing of his selection with Schuster out makes him a near must-have, which is so true. I mean, Schuster, we got the news a couple of days ago. Everyone had about a 12-hour period where they were like, shit, what do we do? And then, yeah, basically had that Katoa news yesterday, which is absolutely huge. Uh, yeah. The cons, you put none, which I feel is probably a, probably not true. <laughs> I think there's a few Well, I mean, cons. job security, but I mean... Oh, I mean, you, it, yeah, you, you, you can't, can't, He's yeah. a bottom price cheapie. So, I mean, let's just say he comes and he plays game one and... Not that we're ever going to reserve him or anything. We're going to just have him in there. What if he gets dumped in game two or three? We can. It's close enough to just go back to Schuster. Schuster. That's that's the there's thing. No, yeah, it's not there, terrible. There's no way from a super coach point that if you start with if he's uh, picked on Tuesday to to come out for the Dolphins that it, there could be any um, downside to it. Yeah, no, hundred percent. People are going to say, "Oh, well, I'm really scared about the job security and the Dolphins suck." Well, halves in uh, bottom price cheapy halves are like unicorns, mate. If you get one, you know, if you 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 got to take them when you get them. I also feel that that's a, that's a really good point to address because I feel like a lot of people when they pick their teams, they're expecting everyone just to average 75. Like people are like, "Oh, this player's weak." I was like, "Yeah, because not everyone's going to be a gold mine." Like that's we have big squads of 25. That's not how it works. And same with you know, picking players with with issues. Like not everyone is going to be risk-free. So there is going to be issues. So you do make a good point there. Um, let's talk about some avoid like the plagues and why the fuck is 9% of people owning Drew Hutchison? What the hell is this? I think, he, I think he is near bottom dollar, but still like 9%. Jesus Christ. And what the hell? I mean, he's, he probably will get a run in there 17 off, off the bench, will he? As I mean, with, utility. with Luke Keery having, um, you know, not fantastic issues with head knocks. I mean, no, it, Maybe, yeah. I mean, because I would have thought they would have gone with Turpin. I mean, it probably means good things for Cheese if it's if it's Drew Hutchinson on the bench. But how the hell is somebody putting him in your team? That's crazy. Okay, I, I can I can understand nine percent over with Drew Hutchinson. I can understand that way more than six percent of people with Cody Nicarima. Yeah, that's crazy too. I mean, what's going on? I feel like I'm like, a, 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 is there already ghost teams in there? You've, you've, Who you've, the, you you can never pick Cody Nicarima even when he had a better role in the team. I remember. I think it was. I want to say last year, the year before, um, he was like he he looked pretty good for two weeks. Everyone jumped on, and I think he got dropped that that he week. And I think the, he, he was the, he got dropped the week everyone bought him. Um, mm-hmm. You've got here Cooper Johns at three point three percent as a avoid like the plague now. Yeah. Oh, tell me about. <sighs> fuck, I, could, I mean, I could see a world. Surely where... Schuster comes back in. He's got to come back. Does he? In. <laughs> Well, does he? Are you gonna Are you gonna have um, Johns in your team? Are you gonna risk? Oh, him? I'm not. I'm not fucking stupid. But uh, Andy <laughs> Seabold could be. Yeah, I mean, if people that is people who say, "Oh, I don't rate Josh Schuster. He looks shit in the six. He should be someone floated that he should be a 13, Josh Schuster." But you can still do ball play from the thirteen. Uh, I actually, wouldn't hate that to be honest. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't hate it either. But, yeah, but look, I, I and think, I thought Johns looked terrific. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, but if these guys, I mean, 
Bostock was getting the run and everyone's got him in their team. Unless they upgrade him to the 30 man squad, he can't be picked for round one. So it's a short stay. You know, logically we think it's a short stay. Yeah. I mean, I they wouldn't put, I, put so much into um, Schuster. I, I, and, and it was always, he was sit behind four and for this six, Imagine if he got sniped. <laughs> if he got knifed by Cooper Johns. Oh, I can't wait for us to do our preview at, uh, round three when we're sitting here at seven o'clock on Tuesday and we just see Josh Schuster, the number 15, with Cooper Johns yeah. in the oh, six. Oh, mate. And I'm just like, these 3.3 geniuses. Oh, yes. Uh, Tyrant Wishart at 2.9%. Not a whole lot more to say here. Just don't. Nah, he's just off the bench, guys. And a soft spot in my heart for draft, because I always feel like I have this bloke in draft. It's Jack White at 2.6% oh, for, cl- Jackie boy. for classic. Hey, no. If anyone could look like they're having an, a nap on, on the field, you see him in that trial. He, he did not want to be there. Nah, it doesn't look good, eh, to me. No, it doesn't. But I'm, that not is- pumped as a, I'm not pumped as a Raiders fan. We've got a really soft draw. And even... Um, even if everything is swimmingly, like Dally M, um, white and average 50s, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's he's never been prolific. As much as he looks good on the eye for Black like, Supercoach, you'd, you'd look at Jack White and look how he plays and think this guy's a tackle busting machine, but he only does it once or twice a game. But anyway, that is the halves done. Uh, this is Saturday, so if we can get our, our, our centre wing podcast uh, research done, we'll do that tomorrow. I've already done my own. Fullbacks. Let's not, let's not pretend I don't do my no, own it, it, it's, it's me. Fullbacks Monday. Live. First episode live on Tuesday. Uh, and then we're straight into the swing of things. We might do, maybe if Ado's free, maybe we might do a team reveal on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, far out. It's, uh, it's been a long preseason, but we finally got there. Uh, many, many podcasts done. We've got two more to go. And then we're going to rip yeah, into I'm stretch. to the preview. Um, the center wing will be a fun one to chat on. Um, we're not going to obviously, there's way too many for us to all discuss, but I like the ones that you've handpicked out and there'll be a lot of really good ways that people can go about it. I don't know. Oh, and there's, to, there's been a few. I have, have a few different weird ideas in the center wing hey, as me, well. Me right now, I do definitely. Um, there's been a few halfbacks we missed today, like DCE, for example. I mean, you know, if Turbo's fit, I really love DCE. Um, so there's, there's a few that we haven't touched on today. Sean O'Sullivan as well is another one, but we can't cover everyone. But use your common sense. Uh, but anyway, it's been the Dual Position Podcast. we back, fingers crossed, maybe tomorrow. If not, uh, I don't know. We'll try and get it done tomorrow. Oh, there's nothing to watch today, so just jump on and pump in some notes. You yeah. don't have to do, make them really great notes. You'll All be right. right. All right. All right, guys. Thank you very much. We will see you uh, tomorrow, hopefully, uh, for the Center Wing Podcast. Farewell. <laughs>